This is the first part of a two-part demo where I'm going to show you how you can use machine learning with Oracle Analytics Cloud, OAC, and Oracle Big Data Cloud. In this scenario, we have customer data. One thing that we do is that every day we calculate a lifetime value called LTV on each customer based on what they have spent with us so far. Uh, and we use that value to allocate the customer into four different LTV segments, or we call them LTV bins, which is low, medium, high, and very high. Now, one challenge with this approach is that we do not know in which segment they're going to end up in, meaning it isn't until they leave us we actually know the final lifetime value. So if we could predict which LTV segment a customer will end up in at the time we acquire the customer, we could use that knowledge in deciding, for example, which customers we want to focus on to make sure that they stay with us. In order to do that, we need to understand what drives the lifetime value. Is there some difference between high value customers and low value customer? And then based on that understanding, we can decide if we have enough data to train a machine learning model that can predict the LTV bin. Now there's multiple ways to get this understanding and I'm gonna use the built-in machine learning in OAC to help me with this. So I have in OAC a data set that has been given to me where I have my customers and I also have the final lifetime value for them and the bin they belong to. So I start off by creating a new project based on that data. As you can see, I start with a blank canvas, like we do in a lot of tools. And one of the challenges I have is to figure out what type of analysis do I need to understand if my data is good enough for accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. And by using the explain feature of OAC, I can use the built-in machine learning to get help with just that. So, I just choose the column I'm interested in, the LTV bin in this case, and explain. By using this function, I can get different types of insights around the LTV bin values. The basic facts gives me an overview. I can see how the LTV bin values are distributed among my customers. And I can select interesting visualization that I want to add to my project for later reuse or sharing with others. So, example here, I can also see how some of the, the values are summarized against this. So I can see that my high value customers has a lot more credit balance than my very high, which is natural since I have more high value customers. More interesting is things like the key drivers. And key drivers shows me what attributes or columns that are good candidates for predicting my LTV bin. I can see that the house ownership, profession, marital status, car ownership, age, number of these dependents, if they have children, the sex, and the state they live in are very good candidates in order to predict the LTV bin. This function is using something that's called its Gini index to calculate which columns that are of most value. And it also, before it do that, it removes columns with a high number of unique values. So that's why I don't see the customer ID or the LTV value here, because those, those columns contains pretty much unique values for each and every customer. I will select a number of interesting visualizations that I'm gonna use later on and, and maybe share with my colleagues around how this is distributed along these uh, key drivers. Lastly, I'm gonna look at the segments. And segments give us the rules or rather the pattern behind the different LTV values. So it's based on training a, a machine learning model using the CART algorithm. And as you can see, it's also using the LTV value as part of these rules. However, I can see that there are other ones that is actually driving the LTV being like state and profession, the number of transactions uh, through the web bank and the salary. 
So based on that, I could say that, yeah, there's a pretty good chance we can use this data to build a model. And if I was interested in to see if there was anomalies in my data, I could use that as well as a step that I need to maybe address before I do anything. But for the case of this demo, we don't use that. So I will add the selected. And I can save this project and continue to work with it and share it with my colleagues. However, for this case, let's train a model now. And in OAC, we do that by using the data flow. So I will choose create the data flow. And first of all, I need to select what data I want to use. So I want to use my customer data where I have the calculated LTV and the LTV bin. So I will add that to my data flow. <clears throat> now, data flow enables me to do some transformations with my data and I can do a lot of things. And sometimes you need to do that in order to uh, generate data that makes sense for the model you want to create. However, in this case, we, we don't really need that. I think that the attributes we have and the data we have is good enough. One thing we do want to do is to remove unnecessary columns. So I'm going to use the select columns function to do that. So what do I mean by unnecessary columns? What I mean with that is that it's data that doesn't make sense in order to predict something. In this case, the LTV bin. So I know that customer ID has nothing to do with which LTV bin you end up in. The last name or the first name does not either affect it. When it comes to state and region, they are basically pretty much the same thing. It is just the, the cardinality of them. So region is on a higher level than state. So I, I only need one of them. And in this case, I may be more interested in what state they live in in comparison to what region they live in. So I will remove that. I also know for a fact that we don't get the buy insurance column for our new customers. So I will remove it as well. And of course, if I'm going to predict the LTV bin, I cannot use the LTV value because that one will be a very strong candidate in order to uh, tell which bin I'm going to belong to. And we don't have it for new customers. Finally, I will add a column called row count. This is a, something that is automatically created when you're using the explain function on your data. So if you see it there, someone has used it, you or someone else has used the explain function. So let's remove that one as well. It doesn't say anything. So once I'm satisfied, I can choose my algorithm. Before I can choose an algorithm, I need to decide what type of um, predictions am I doing? Am I predicting a numeric value? So if I was interested in trying to predict the actual lifetime value, I could use that numeric prediction. But in this case, I'm, I'm only interested to figure out which segment they should belong to. So I have four values to choose between, or four classes. Therefore, I'm going to use a multi-classifier as opposite to a binary classification where I can only choose between two classes. Final thing I need to choose is the, the algorithm I'm going to use. And we have about we have five different algorithms for multi-classification in OAC that you can use. And I'm going to use the neural network for classification in this case. Why not none of the others? Well, why not? I mean, neural networks is the, is the new black, so let's go for that. So there's multiple settings we can play around with uh, before we train the algorithm. But in this case, we're only interested in a few of these. So Primary, the most important one is to choose the target column. And the target column is actually is the lifetime value bin. It contains the values we want to predict. We also want to address the train partition percent. So when we train the model, it works in the way that it takes, it doesn't use all the data, it's only used a part of the data. So one part is used for training, and then it uses another part of the data to verify the model. So creating some, some interesting metrics we're going to look at in the later phase. In this case, I'm going to use 90% for training. I'm also interested in changing the batch size. And the batch size is how much data we want to use for each training iteration. 
In this case, I'm going to use 64. And that means that it's going to use, it's going to sample 64 rows, train on that, then collect the next 64 rows, train on that, and the next, and the next, and so on, until we are, have no more data left. This approach makes the training of a neural network much faster. The final parameter that is interesting is the optimizer method. And the optimizer method is actually the function we want to use to minimize or maximize uh, objective of this. And in this case, when we build a neural network, the objective is to minimize the error. And the error is the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. We're going to use something that is called the Adam optimizer. And an Adam optimizer is a good general optimizer that works with the most, most types of data. So you can usually start with that one. And before we train our model, we also need to give it a name that we can save it under so we can later use it. And untitled is, is not maybe the best name. So let's call it for what it does. Predict LTV bin, maybe add something that says that we're using a neural network. Now we can, we can actually do the training. We can save the workflow. We want to use it for later. But in the, this case, I'm only interested in, in getting the model. So I will choose to execute data flow. And what it does now is it collects the data, it selects the columns I want to use, and it starts training the model for me. Once done, we can actually now evaluate the model. So let's do that. The model we create, it ends up in, in the machine learning part of OAC under the models. So I have my new model here and I can choose inspect to get some information of it. Now the general tab will also give us some overview information about what algorithm we use, what data we train it on. The most interesting is the quality tab that shows us how good the model is. And there's a couple, depending on the type of algorithm we use, we will see different things. And in this case, we are interested in the number of these metrics. So we have the overall F1 value, which tells us how good our model is. It's in predicting all the different values we have in the LTV bin, which is 0.97. One would be that it can predict everything correct. Zero, nothing. So it's, on an average, it's quite good. The other part we're interested in is something called precision and recall. And what we see here is what we call a confusion ma matrix. And it helps us to compare predicted values with the actual value. So we can see on this axis, we have the predicted value. And on this axis, we have the actual values. So we can see that we uh, predicted 722 values as high, which also actual was high. But we can also see here that 10 values that we predicted high was actual medium. And the precision and the recall is telling us basically the same, where the precision tells us how many of all the predicted value was correct. So for high here, we can see that 98% of the values that we predicted high was actually high. That is good. We can also see for the recall that says to tell us the number of correct predicted values. So in this case, 94% or very high tell us that of all actual very high values, we managed to predict 94% of them correct. So based on these, we, we can now do an assessment on the model and I would say, yeah, this is a good model. We can use it on the, on the new data. And in OAC, we can apply a pre-trained model in two ways. One way is using data flows to apply the model on, on data and save it as a new data set with the predicted value. And the other way is to use it as a part of our visualization. So let's start with the first one. So we will once again create a data flow. And the difference this time is now we're going to use a customer data set where we have our new customers. So in this data set, we don't have any lifetime value because we want to predict this. We have some other data in it that we will be using. And if we had done any transformations with the data before we trained the model, we would have to do the same transformations here as well. 
But in this case, we didn't do anything, so we can just apply the model. So let's choose Apply Model. And then we can choose our neural, new model that we previously trained. We need to verify some settings before we continue. So the outputs is what should we call the columns where it puts the predicted value, defaulted predicted value, but I, I would like to call it LTV bin just to be consistent. The second one is the confidence. How sure are we that the value we predicted are, are the right one? So it's a percentage value or between zero and one where one is we, we, we are very sure and zero is we have no clue whatsoever. There's some parameters here that we can set, not that many. The second thing we need to verify is the inputs. So the model expects a number of inputs with these names and we need to make sure that they are mapped to the, actual, the, the values we want to put in there. So by default, it maps by name. So if the input data we're using has the name, same name of the columns as the ones we used for the model, it will automatically map it. Otherwise, we need to point it to the right, to the right column. But in this case, everything is correct. We then need to decide what we're going to do next. So we can continue work with this data. Maybe we want to add some additional data or aggregate it or group it or whatever we want to do. We can do that. But in this case, we just want to save it as a new data set. So we're going to call it customers with LTV bin. We can save this data flow as all other data flows to later be used or just execute it. So I'm just going to choose to execute it. Once it's complete, we can go and, and use our new data set. So if we go and look at our, in the data section, We should have a, a new data set. So we have here customers with LTV bin, and we can use that in our project. So we can now create a report where we show the new customers and the predicted LTV bin, or we can save that data set for use for something else. So let's take the first last name, LTV, and the prediction confidence. Pick some visualization type table. And now we have the information. Maybe not in the let's move this around so we get it in a better way. So we can see here per customer. What is the predictive bin and how, how confident are within these predictions? And we can see overall we're, we're pretty confident in this. Maybe this Aaron roll is where we only have 0 0.55. Maybe we should think it over again. But this is how we can do the data. Now, the second way we can do this is we can take the new customers we have without the LTV value and start a new project on it. And as we can see, there's no LTV or LTV bin. And then we can use something that is called create scenario. And create scenario enable us to use the new model on the data. So what it does, it, it applies the model and it creates an additional data set. So we have the LTV bin prediction and the prediction confidence. And we can do the same thing here now. First, last. Prediction, confidence, pick visualization. And we created pretty much basically the same type of report as we did previously. The only difference is that the prediction, predicted values are only based in the project, so, that, so it doesn't exist in the data. And depending on what we want to do, either way is, is equally good.